Okay, let's talk about second grade algebra. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but you were doing algebra way, way back in the second grade. And some of you might be like, hmm, hmm, I don't think that's right. I was definitely not doing this in the second grade. But in fact, you were, okay? And I want to explain to you how you were basically doing algebra in elementary school. And you did quite a bit of it. So some of the first math that you learned, okay, you're saying, well, I just learned the numbers and arithmetic. Yes, you did learn this, but you were also learning algebra, and you weren't even aware of it. So I'm going to uh, get into what you were doing, uh, what I was doing, and I don't know when you went to elementary school, but I went to elementary school way back in the 1970s, early 70s. It was so cool back in those days. It was pretty crazy as well because I went to elementary school in uh, Southern California, and I remember my first grade teacher smoking in the classroom, which was kind of crazy. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I guess those were the good old days, however you want to think about it. But uh, it doesn't make a difference when you went to elementary school, whether it was the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, 90s, or, uh, you know, well, recently, uh, you were doing some algebra. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, what I'm talking about here in just one second. But first, let me uh, quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I basically have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, college algebra. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very shortly. But I also have a lot of test preparation courses. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, high set task, um, Alex Accuplacer, a teacher certification exam, um, SAT, I think I said that, or ACT, you, you kind of get the idea. There's a ton of very, very important tests that people have to take that have a lot of uh, mathematics on it. So there's a lot of people studying math that are outside of a math course, and they need to review a tremendous amount of math. So my test preparation courses are uh, very, very good, and you can find uh, my full catalog of those on my site. I also work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. So if you're homeschooling, you want to check out my site as well. And then obviously, if you're just struggling in mathematics, I could help you out. But one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out if you are a current math student is you need to take great math notes. Over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes always do well, uh, generally speaking, in terms of their grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who don't take math notes oftentimes are unhappy. They're like this at the end of the year, and they're like, why did that happen to me? Well, where's your math notes? They're like, math notes? I didn't take any math notes. So you get the idea. I made all these mistakes myself. Don't try to cheat the system. If you're going to uh, study mathematics, you got to take great math notes. But as you start taking math notes or you start improving in your note-taking, um, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, let's get into second grade algebra. Now, uh, I put second grade in here because that's kind of when I kind of remember this. So this is typically around the time when you're getting into some basic uh, number sense and, and whatnot. So let's kind of get into what I'm talking about, okay? All right, so here, okay, we have in... Uh, you know, I'm going to use some technical terms uh, in algebra, right? What we're looking at here is a linear equation. This is a linear equation, okay? Y is what? Okay, well, if you don't know what this uh, is called, we call this a variable, okay, in algebra. So we want to, the objective here when you have an equation in algebra is generally you want to solve the equation, okay? So we want to find out what this uh, value is that makes this equation true. Now, the uh, solution to this equation is whatever value y is equal to, okay, such that when you plug that number, you replace this y with that number, it makes this equation true, okay? So, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to uh, show you how you do this, and you learned how to do this way back in the second grade. So, let's look at the same problem, but let's look at it this way. Let's put a box here, okay, plus... 3 is equal to 5. Now, go back in the recesses of your memory and think back and you're like, mm, okay, you're doing your homework or you're, you know, you're there and you're 
uh, classroom, second grade classroom, and your teacher is saying, okay, let's go ahead and figure out what should we put in here to make this right? And everyone is saying, I know, I know, raising their hands, all excited. And you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I bet if I put a two in there, uh, that's going to make this right because two plus three is five. Okay. And you're like, yeah, two plus three is five. That's what this means. In fact, that's exactly correct. Okay. And this is algebra. This is algebra. What you have here is a symbol. Okay. This symbol here is just, it's a box, but it represents a number. Okay. So some number plus three is equal to five. Why is the same thing? Why is some number plus three is equal to five? These are mathematically equivalent. Okay. Now in algebra, we use kind of, um, nice variables like X and Y and A and B. But back in the second grade, you would, use, uh, you would use like a box or like a circle or something like that, or even like a little underline. This is another way you could do it. Uh, blank plus three is equal to five. And you're kind of, come on, you can kind of figure out. But when you were figuring this out, you might have, you know, been like, hmm, if uh, I put in a one right there, one plus three, and you kind of get your little fingers out there. Well, here, this is a terrible one, two, three, four, five. All right, this is a terrible hand, but you get the idea. You're like one, two, three, four. You're counting, counting away, and you're trying to figure out reason how to get this answer right. And effectively, you were uh, solving the equation. You were solving this equation. Now, the approach that you used was kind of a trial and error. Okay, you were kind of using some mental mathematics, but in fact, you were solving an equation, okay? And you were doing algebra. You didn't even realize that. So algebra, okay, is nothing more than, you know, with these variables here, they represent um, numbers, okay? Now, it, when we uh, learn algebra, instead of kind of mentally thinking about what I kind of should put in here, and these are nice, basic, easy numbers, you can kind of use your fingers. Well, you know, pr uh, the problems in, uh, obviously in algebra get more challenging, but the mechanics you know, or the objectives are effectively the same. We're trying to figure out what is the value that goes into this box that makes this statement true. And of course, when I plug in two here, two plus three is five. Five equals five is true, okay? So therefore, this number that I plugged into the box made this statement true, that's the right answer. However, in algebra talk, we would call that uh, a solution. Now let's go ahead and use, um, algebra techniques to uh, figure out the solution. Now the solution is nothing more than what is the value that I should put into the box to make this answer right, okay? Well, in algebra, we use techniques like, okay, we wanna get this box by itself, okay? So we know what the answer is. So I'm saying, okay, I got y plus three is equal to five. So I wanna get the y by itself. So I'm gonna subtract three, okay? away from this positive three so I could just have a y. But in algebra, okay, there's a rule that basically states whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing on the other side of the equation as well. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to solve equations, but this is what you learn when you're studying algebra kind of formally. Okay, then we kind of add down in a column, column manner this way. So we get y plus nothing is y positive three uh, or three minus three is zero, and then five minus three is two. So y is equal to two. But basically, this is uh, this is the solution. That's just saying, hey, that is the number that goes into the box. So uh, don't be overly intimidated by algebra in terms of what it what it is. You got all these crazy variables and the notation is more sophisticated. But in fact, you know, you have a good foundation and the essence of algebra already way back in your elementary school days. Uh, unfortunately, when you study algebra, uh, unless your teacher is pretty cool, you're not going to get all those nice rewards when you did in the second grade when you got a problem right, which was the happy face and the stars and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I never gave too many stars and whatnot to my uh, high school students you know, taking algebra. They would be like, yeah, that's not cool, uh, you know. But in second grade, boy, I tell you, when you got stars, that was like the most fantastic thing. You were like, yay, look at me. I can figure this out. So indeed, okay, uh, when we're talking about algebra, you already have aptitude uh, to learn it. So if you're struggling 
you know, with algebra, if you're intimidated of it, you need to relax, okay? Uh, but you got to approach this one step at a time. All right, so if you were not quite convinced that, in fact, you were doing second grade algebra um, or algebra in the second grade, hopefully this video said, hmm, yeah, maybe I do even know how to do some basic algebra now. In fact, you do, okay? Now, you know, obviously the objective is to solve more challenging problems. If I put like uh, one third in front of this Y, then uh, I put a 13 here and make this a negative number, now we're going to have to learn more tools and techniques, but it's still the same thing. We're still trying to figure out what this value is right there to make this equation true. And this is only one component of algebra. All right. So with that being said, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it uh, interesting. If that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. That always helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who is obsessed with teaching mathematics in a clear and understandable way. And uh, if you do need help, uh, and math in any uh, way, just check out the links in uh, the description of this video. That's where you'll find my best stuff. But I also have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.